What you guys got another video here for you in this one we're going to be taking a look at is this the end of thermal paste we have the IC graphite thermal pad here from innovation cooling and basically this will replace uh, thermal paste on your CPU so you won't have to get that messy thermal paste out anymore like this stuff here and put this on your cooler you basically put this graphite pad onto your CPU and basically it will cool your CPU down so we're going to be testing out the uh, thermal pad and also the thermal paste method and we're going to see what comes out on top and whether uh, this is the actual end of thermal paste itself now the thermal paste here is similar to arctic silver and of course the thermal pad is uh, the IC graphite thermal pad from innovation cooling these are pretty affordable now this is the smaller version they do different sizes and we're going to be testing both these out this is the HY710 from China it's basically similar to uh, Arctic Silver and it works pretty well so you can see I've got the stock cooler in here with the Ryzen 2600 and uh, that's what we're going to be testing right now to see what the temps are I wanted to get idle temperatures and also maximum temperatures for uh, the CPU when it's got the thermal compound on it now this is uh, the stock cooler we're going to be using at the moment and then I'm going to change it out to the Rafe Prism and also test it with the Rafe Prism because I want to put a bit of RGB on this before I sell it just to make it look a bit nicer in the center there because it just looks a bit dull so I would really want to change that up so here we are on the computer so let's go ahead and uh, open up our uh, hardware monitor here and we'll just see what sort of temperatures we're getting now this is 48 celsius as you can see here which is pretty toasty for a stock cooler with stock compound this is the actual compound that comes pre done on the actual stock cooler so i've not changed anything at the moment that is exactly what you're getting right here which means it's pretty hot so you can see here also the cpu fan is spinning at 1869 revs per minute so let's open up prime 95 and then we'll see what this uh, comes out like now this is using the blend method here there's diff different other methods here that you can use but i'm just going to use this blend blend method and we'll see what temps we get so you can see here it's gone up to 65 celsius and now the cpu cooler is starting to ramp up to maximum 2356 and you can see the temperature climbing very quickly and you can see it uh, going up it started to get really noisy and i stopped the test when it got to uh, 70 celsius basically so that was the stock cooler which come with the ryzen 2600 this is the cooler here so we're going to remove this cooler now and uh, this also had the stock compound on it uh, which come with the uh, cooler already applied so we're going to be removing this from the system and I'm going to be putting the Rafe Prism on here. Now I do have a Rafe Prism uh, handy, which is not being used. And I think it will just look nicer in this build when I come to sell it. Because it's brand new and it needs to be sold. Because I don't need it because I've got other computers. So let me just give this a little twist. And we're going to remove this here. Now on closer inspection here, you can see that CPU is pretty clear of a compound. It's not that great. The spread wasn't that great. And even on the cooler itself it's not really spread that great to be fair so and again there's no copper on this there's a, a aluminium um, cooler so it's not the best again I would wipe this off and clean all this and I will test this with the arctic silver type compound and put it on here at the end of the video and put that cooler back on just to test and you can see here it's pretty dry on there as well now this PC has not been used very much uh, at all so not very impressed with the compound that they've used as stock on this cooler it's, it's not that great and you can see the Ryzen right in there it's pretty clear there's no uh, even spread on there okay so let's get the bracket onto the motherboard again because the Rafe Prism uses that bracket to hook itself up and these can be a bit tricky to put on these Rafe Prisms to be honest so just going to put this uh, bracket back on and it's always important to keep these brackets safe just in case you need to ever use these again or put them back on so keep these in your motherboard box and what we use is the graphite thermal pad in this test and basically once we've got that on we'll see whether it's going to ever 
replace thermal compound. And of course, if the thermal pad does really well, as in equal temps as thermal paste, then of course it's a no brainer. You're gonna start using thermal pads because of uh, the temperatures. Now it doesn't have to be thermal paste, it just has to be equal to it. And you can see this is it here. Now this is the only uh, size I bought, which was the 30 times 30, so it's a smaller one. So I'm hoping it's not gonna cause a problem. You see it's paper thin here, it really is. It's so sort of delicate as well. And it's made of graphite here, super lightweight, and you can reuse this now, you can put this onto the CPU here, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be okay. It's not the larger size, but it's the only one that I bought, and I didn't realize they did other sizes. Uh, but we're gonna go with it and see how it goes. Now, there's one problem I can see here. It's super slippery uh, when I'm putting it onto the actual CPU itself. And this may be a problem when you're actually putting the cooler on, it could move. And this needs to stay put right in the center. So. If you start moving this about and it doesn't quite get right over the CPU, that could be a problem. So I've got the cooler here. Now remember, we don't have to apply anything here. We can just attach this down and it's using these little catches on the side. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, put this onto the CPU. Now this has a big massive copper plate on the bottom and some copper pipes, which should make a better cooling solution altogether and hopefully we'll get some tests. Now we'll put some compound on this cooler as well so we get an idea of what it's like. So I need to get this down onto that little hook here and I will need to move the tripod out of the way because it's in the way and I can't clip it on and I don't want to disturb that thermal pad. So let me just uh, get the tripod out of the way and I'll get this into location here. Okay, so I'm gonna clip this on and then clip it down and hopefully try not to move that cooler too much. Okay, so we got it installed here. And yes, I know that logo's around the wrong way. Don't worry about that, it's just for testing purposes. I'll sort that out when I finish the actual uh, build itself. But the whole idea of this test is to see whether that thermal pad is better or equal to thermal compound, which means it saves a lot of mess and trouble. So let's have a look at the idle temps here. The idle temps are 31 Celsius and uh, the minimum is 30 Celsius, which is from Innovation Cooling, which is the IC Graphite Thermal Pad, which isn't too bad. That's the best result so far. But remember, this is a different cooler, so I will need to put some thermal compound on there. Now you can see the CPU cooler is spinning up a lot lower as well. It's only at 1366 uh, revs per minute which means if I ramp that up it will probably get a little bit cooler I'm just going to leave that as is so now we're going to run prime 95 and we're going to see what the temps are with this thermal pad on there and at the moment you can see we're at 49 celsius which is pretty good and also we're getting the cpu revs per minute up to 2261 so we're just going to leave that for a while and see what the max temps get to and you can see we're at 53 celsius which i think is absolutely awesome for a thermal pad so that is already better than the stock cooler of the 2600 with the thermal paste on there so pretty decent results now remember this is also a better cooler than the stock cooler uh, that comes with the 2600 it's also got that thermal pad on there, so we will put some compound on. And I've tried to take this off as careful as possible, and you can see what happened to that thermal pad. It actually slipped and moved over to the right-hand side. So it wasn't on the CPU fully. So, and this is the only problem I can see with these thermal pads. It's very, very slippy, as you can see here. It can easily be moved about on here. It's quite slippy, as you can see here, uh, because the, the surface of the Ryzen processor is quite shiny and of course um, it will slip about and that's the only thing I can see that when you're going to be clamping down you have to make sure that that is 100% onto the CPU and this weren't clearly on there so I've added some thermal compound on now so I've added the HY710 on there and we're going to remount the Wraith Prism onto the motherboard and then we're going to give this a test now remember guys as well that I haven't had time to leave this to cool down so also uh, everything is still a little bit warm so we'll give this another test here and see how this turns out. So I'm just going to quickly clamp that down 
and now we'll just give it a bit of power and then we'll see what the test results are for the Wraith Prism with the HY710 compound and hopefully we should get an idea of how good that uh, thermal pad is against uh, some Arctic Silver based type compound. Just need to put the graphics card back in because I had to remove it to get the actual cooler in because it was a bit of a, a faff with the uh, side clip. Okay, so I'm going to give it a bit of power and then we can uh, get some test results up. Okay, so here we are back at the computer here. That cooler does look a lot better on that in that case there. So let's take a look at some of the test results here. So we're going to open up HDW monitor and we'll get a look at the temperatures. Now I can already see the CPU temperature is at 35 Celsius. Maximum was 36 and that's idle. And of course the CPU is spinning at 1599 revs per minute. Maximum was 1605. So pretty decent uh, temps there. Of course the heating did come on in the house. It wasn't fully hot but it was just sort of uh, temp ambient temperatures in the room was going up a little bit so you've got prime 95 running now and you can see we're at 50 celsius here which isn't too bad and of course the refs per minute on the cpu cooler has ramped right up and that's because it's now having to work a bit harder 2415 refs per minute maximum 53 celsius uh, for the max temps with the wraith prism with compound so that is a pretty good results for the thermal uh, pad there for the graphite thermal pad which was in a, in a sense performed better than the actual thermal paste on idle temps it was the same I think on the max temps so 53 I think the max temp was and you can see here now this is the stock cooler again I've put the stock cooler back on with some fresh compound and you can see the idle temps was 42 celsius I'm going to run Prime 95. I just wanted to give this a test again. And I can already see the temps are starting to climb very rapidly here. You can see them going up quick. And this is because obviously the cooler's not as good. Um, the CPU cooler's not as good. And we have got that fresh compound on there because I wanted to give it another test with a fresh compound. You can see it got close to uh, 70 Celsius here. Uh, the revs per minute was up to 2,450 at maximum speed. And of course, 68 Celsius was maximum. So uh, two degrees Celsius difference from the other compound. So not much difference there. So what do I think? Well, I think the test results speak for themselves. The thermal pad did win by a small smidgen on the idle temps. And all in all, I do think it did pretty well. But at the end of the day, it's not going to replace thermal paste just yet because you need to do some other testing. This was quite a basic test, but it did perform very, very well. But there is some plus points for the for the thermal pad itself. You can reuse it many times. Also, uh, you know, it's not going to dry up or anything like that. It's going to stay as it is and uh, things like that. So I do think there is a plus point. Now for the negative point, it might be difficult to seat it in the center and keep it there without it moving. That's my only concern with the thermal pad itself because it seemed to be quite a shiny surface and it was moving around quite easily and freely on that CPU and it did move during the installation process. Other than that, it's a pretty good product and I would recommend it at any time. So it's a pretty decent product. I would like to do more testing with this product, maybe get a few more samples and also uh, do some other testing with some other compounds to see what the results would be like. But other than that, I think that's going to be about it for this one. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Have a great weekend. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.